Hello, this is Dr. Martin's supplemental lecture on chapter 26. Um, I'm going to be covering sections 1, 2, and 3 in the next series of mini lectures. Uh, first, I want to introduce uh, the groups that I'm going to be talking about, and those are the reptiles, the birds, and the mammals. So these are actually classes. This is class reptilia, uh, class ABs, ABES, and class mammalia. Now, the, these three groups actually represent organisms that are better adapted to a, a terrestrial land or land uh, environment uh, compared to the amphibians. And they share a number of features um, that uh, exemplify those advancements. Uh, one, I'm going to list those on the board. Um, again, I'm still talking about the group, these three groups as a entity. So these are uh, features that represent adaptations to terrestrial existence. Kind of a long-winded way to say that. Uh, one of the most important characteristics that these three groups have is the development of an egg that's called the amniotic egg. And I'm going to talk, I have a diagram over here, I'm going to talk a little more in a little more detail about what makes this egg so special, um, but at this point we're just going to say that um, it has a number, uh, has extra membranes, uh, plus a shell to protect the embryo. And because of that, uh, because all of these, the birds, reptiles, mammals, possess this particular egg, they are sometimes collectively referred to as the amniotes. Okay, a couple of other important features or uh, advancements um, that I just want to add to our list here. Uh, is the development of what's called internal fertilization as well as the development of a skin uh, that is more or less uh, watertight or waterproof. So let's go ahead and add those. Those would be two and three to our list. And then we're going to come back and talk about each of those in a little more detail. Okay, so number two would be what's called internal fertilization. So this means that the sperm is deposited within the body of the female, um, and so that keeps the zygote protected uh, for a longer period of time. Number three is the development of a we'll call it a watertight skin, uh, because that's what your textbook refers to it as. Um, so this is another advancement, another adaptation to the uh, problems that a land-based or a terrestrial existence um, presents. Okay, so we've got three advancements. Let's go back to the first one. 
and talk about this egg. Again, this is called the amniotic egg. You may also see it or hear it referred to as the cleidoic egg. Uh, but again, remember, because all of these, uh, the birds, reptiles, and mammals, um, are descendants from organisms that laid these kinds of eggs, they are sometimes called the, the amniotes. Okay, so here we have a diagram of this kind of egg. And first off, we have an outer shell, which is certainly going to protect uh, the embryo. We have an inner set shell membrane. And then within that, we have four special membranes that um, are all serve various functions. I'm going to talk about their functions, uh, but they all serve the embryo in some, some way. So here's our embryo right here. And let's work from uh, the innermost membranes to the outermost. So you can see in this diagram that the black dotted line uh, represents the first of the membranes that I'm going to list here. And this is called the amnion or amniotic sac. And the function of this is to uh, dampen uh, movements uh, that might occur with the egg. So it's going to cushion the embryo. And because it's really a sac that has fluid in it, fluid prevents dehydration. So in humans, this is going to be the sac uh, that the embryo kind of floats in, if you've seen pictures in utero of various um, human embryos. Uh, and again, it's a fluid uh, environment. Um, there are ways uh, to sample the cells uh, that are in that fluid that have come off of the embryo to detect maybe some genetic diseases. All right, so this is our first membrane right here, the amnion. Now, there's two other membranes that we're going to talk about. Well, actually three, but um, the next two are shown here and here. So I'm going to erase this. And so now we're going to have B. And we have the yolk sac. So this is shown right here in red. And so this provides nutrients. to the embryo during development. The membrane next to it is called the allantois. And this is a sac that receives waste from the embryo. So it's a way to sequester or keep uh, any products that could be, if they accumulate, could be toxic to the embryo, so we keep them in a special sac. So this is the allantois. All right, that leaves one last membrane of the four total, not counting the shell. And so this would be D. And this is called the chorion, and it's shown here in green. C-H-O-R-I-O-N. 
And this is an important membrane. In humans, this becomes part of the placenta. Uh, but this is going to um, be the site of gas exchange. So oxygen and CO2 are going to make their way across this membrane to on their way to the embryo or away from the embryo. All right, so that's an important advancement for this group, is the, the development of this special kind of egg. Uh, I mentioned two other adaptations, and they were internal fertilization, And as I said earlier, the term internal means that the sperm are going to be deposited inside the female, and therefore the developing zygote will be protected. Um, so this is compared to what's called external, where the sperm and egg are deposited outside of the body of the female, and they develop um, outside of the male and female. So they are subject to predation and so on. All right, the third uh, that I want to come back to is the development of uh, skin that is we'll call it waterproof. Uh, there's a special protein called keratin that is seen in these uh, particular organisms um, and it contributes to the uh, waterproofing. So keratin is a protein that is found in the layers of your skin. Um, there's other structures uh, that are also made of keratin, and they're going to be fur or hair, nails, horns, and so on. So this, the development of this protein or the evolution of this protein is actually pretty important um, in the overall scheme uh, of these particular organisms. All right, so just to um, summarize, we have a group of organisms, the reptiles, mammals, birds, and mammals, that um, are all much more adapted to a land existence compared to the amphibians, and they show a number of adaptations. Uh, certainly foremost among them is the development of uh, extra membranes that surround the embryo and an outer shell that surrounds the, membrane, the embryo, and then internal fertilization and the development of a skin that is watertight or waterproof.